So one thing to understand, and I know many of you know how to meditate, you know, many of you have been meditating for many years, um, but just as a reminder, so we have two stages to any meditation in Kadam Lam Rim, um, and the same here. We have a stage where we're contemplating. We call it analytical meditation, where we're contemplating um, a line of reasoning. You know, we, we sometimes call it like a purposeful process of investigation or thought. So we'll, we'll deliberately contemplate reasoning that we think um, is logical and that moves our mind in the direction of the object of our meditation. So this is what the first part of our meditation will be, contemplating these reasonings that I read in order to establish a basis for seeing everyone without exception as kind. So once we do that, then there'll be some experience, like our mind will move into the place of affectionate love, we'll have some experience of a warm heart, or maybe a warmer heart, right? A little bit warmer, a little less icy, a little less chilly, <laughs> a little warmer, right? We'll have a, we'll have a feeling of, of some warmth towards everyone, you know, that we think about. And then a feeling of closeness, affection, friendly feeling. So when we start to have those experiences, we found the object of our meditation for that session. So that's when we would enter the second stage of the meditation, which we call placement meditation. This is where, you know, when he's, he's saying here, Geshla, um, we transform our mind into this feeling, this feeling of, of warmth, closeness for others, and we remain on it single pointedly for as long as possible. So then we just single pointedly focus in the second stage of meditation on that feeling of affectionate love. We stop contemplating. We stop analyzing. We just hold that experience for a while and, until it begins to fade. And then we can return again to um, analytical meditation, contemplating the reasonings again to establish um, uh, a feeling of kindness towards others. We think they're kind. And then we start to feel some affectionate love come. And then we again hold that object. So I don't know if you have, a, for me, this is a really good example or analogy. I don't know if you have these in your towns, but definitely in DC we have them. I'm sure you have them too, which is these motorized scooters. And I was really kind of amused when I first saw them because I hadn't seen scooters since I was a kid and I had one when I was a kid. And it kind of seems like cheating because these, I don't have, I haven't ridden them yet, but they, the people just get on them and they like take off. <laughs> go because they're motorized scooters but when, when I had a scooter um, to get it moving you had to apply some effort right you had to kind of like you had to go through the motions didn't you have to like kick out and push and kick out and push push to get it moving get it moving forward and then once you kicked and pushed for a while it started to get some momentum the scooter and then you would stop kicking and you'd stop pushing you just coast right you just coast and you'd enjoy the ride so to me, this is a great kind of metaphor for these two stages of meditation. Like we, we need to initially get our mind moving in the direction of our object of meditation, affectionate love, through analytical meditation, through contemplating. You know, we have to put some effort into considering the reasoning that's presented in the instructions. But then there comes a point when we've generated this feeling of affectionate love that we stop contemplating. Like in the, the, the example of the scooter, we stop kicking and pushing. Right, because the objective really is to coast. Otherwise, why would you be on a scooter? You'd just be walking somewhere. If it was going to require a lot of effort to kick and push, kick and push everywhere you were going, you'd just walk. You wouldn't bother with a scooter. What we're really hoping to do is to like coast. So it's the same thing. What we're really trying to do in this meditation is to hold this feeling of affectionate love for all living beings without exception. So when we start to get there. You know, we start to actually feel some warmth, some closeness. We have to stop contemplating. We have to stop analyzing and just meditate single-pointedly on that feeling. Just, just let ourself um, experience, like a, a heartfelt experience. Like he says, transform our mind into that feeling of affectionate love. So I'm just saying this, I know many of you are very experienced meditators, but I, I think it's just helpful before we start a meditation to be kind of clear. Um, we're gonna contemplate for a while, but really what we wanna spend a majority of the meditation doing is, is actually experiencing affectionate love. And so when we get to the point where we're gaining some experience, we, we need to stop <laughs> kicking and pushing, <laughs> stop analyzing, and just allow our mind to coast in that experience of affectionate love for a while.